I've had the Bamboo Labs P1S 3D printer for a little over one month now, and I gotta be honest with you, I didn't like it. Now I know that may come as a surprise to a lot of you considering Bamboo Labs has been an amazing company, everybody's been giving it so much praises lately, and let me be honest, they're deserved. I have an A1 Mini right here and I love it. It was my first real 3D printer. About three months ago, I actually started trying to learn how to 3D print, how these machines work, and I decided to take the leap and jump into a different 3D printer and it took some time to get used to. It definitely had some growing pains, but over this past month, I have learned to love this printer. It has completely grown on me, but I wanted to give you the beginner's perspective. Is the Bamboo Lab P1S a good 3D printer for beginners? Now I came up with six questions that I would like to answer in today's video that will determine to me and to you guys if this printer is good for beginners or if you should skip it and go with a different type of 3D printer. Now obviously this video is gonna be full of my opinions and my experiences, so don't take anything that I say too seriously. Let me know if you have some different opinions in the comments down below, I'd love to talk about it. And obviously my ranking system means nothing. It's just what I think would make a good beginner 3D printer, and I thought maybe you guys would wanna know too. The six questions that I would like to answer in today's video are, how easy is the setup? How much troubleshooting is required? Does it require previous knowledge or experience with 3D printing? How easy is the everyday use of the printer? How easy is it to get help if you have a problem? And finally, how good is the actual printer? If you can't print good, there's no point in any of this. I'm gonna give this printer a score out of 10 for all of these questions and we will see what it equals out to in the very end. Hurry, click the subscribe button. Now we're hitting 5,000 subs. That guy really came out of nowhere. Now before we start getting into these questions, I wanted to go over some of the specs of this printer and what printer I think it is most comparable to in terms of beginner 3D printers. I think the most obvious choice to compare with this printer is the Bamboo Labs A1 series of printers. Now obviously I have my A1 Mini right there. Amazing printer, absolutely love it. I have plenty of videos on that you can go check out if you want to. But I'm gonna be focusing on the A1 printer as it has the same exact build volume as the P1S behind me. Now obviously the A1 series printers are bed slinger printers and this is a Core XY. Now personally, I have not noticed any difference in print quality or print speed with these two different mechanisms. However, if you really get into the nitty gritty, you can definitely find some stuff that makes them each different and gives them each some strengths and weaknesses depending on what you're trying to print. They both claim to be easy setups out of the box, which I think is true. They both claim to have full auto calibration, which is also very true. Now the P1S does claim to print a little bit quicker than the A1 series printer. However, that comes with a cost. And by cost, I mean literal cost. This printer with the AMS system is almost $300 more than the A1 series printer with the exact same build volume and an AMS system. Now obviously with the A1 series printers, you're gonna get your AMS Lite, which some people love compared to your standard AMS. Some people don't love it so much compared to your standard AMS. Either way, we're not gonna be digging into that today. We're just gonna say they can both print multicolored. The next major difference just looking at the two printers is that the P1S is a fully enclosed system while your A1 series printers are not. Now having fully enclosed systems has its benefits as well as its drawbacks. The main benefits are obviously keep your prints clean, keep dog hair out of there, any types of debris can kind of keep it away. And also you can print different types of materials at higher temperatures because it's fully enclosed, it can hold some more heat. I've already printed a couple of different things out of ABS with my P1S and they turned out amazing. I didn't even have a single failed print. I didn't have to calibrate anything. I simply clicked ABS and it just worked. Now, if there's some other materials that you want to print out of that your machine cannot print, I have a great idea for you and it is today's sponsor, which is PCB Way. PCB Way is not only known for creating their custom PCBs, they are also very well known for their CNC and 3D printing services. If you have a 3D printer that either cannot print certain materials or doesn't have a large enough build volume, you can head over to PCB Way, upload your file, and you can pick from all sorts of different materials such as resin, nylon, PLA, ABS, pick your quantity, the size of your STL, you can see your subtotal here as well as how long it will take to get your item. You can submit your request. I just think this is an amazing service and I'm very honored to be sponsored by PCB Way in today's video. With that out of the way, I wanted to jump straight into the questions. However, we need to go back a little bit and uh, talk about how easy this thing is to set up. Now, I may or may not make a full unboxing video about this. If I do, up in that corner, you already know. If I don't, here's some clips from it. 
Getting a closer look here, here's that print head, bunch of zip ties and cardboard around it. It's awesome to see that they packaged it so well. Now the very first question that I wanted to answer, how easy is the setup on the Bamboo Lab P1S? On their website, they claim a 15 minute setup time from out of the box to printing. Is that really true? In my experience, kind of. It took me about 20 minutes to fully set up the machine, and that is including connecting the Wi-Fi, which is where I had my first problem and had to troubleshoot. Now the instructions are super easy to follow. They have some great pictures. I gotta give it to Bamboo Labs. Their instructions are definitely top notch. I just had a problem connecting my Wi-Fi, which is an issue because this printer does not have a manual ethernet connection. So a wireless connection is required in order to print with this machine. Now, when I say troubleshooting, I don't mean anything crazy. I literally mean closing the app out, restarting my phone, doing the process again, and it worked on the third or fourth try. It was nothing crazy. It took an extra five minutes. However, I do think it's worth noting. And you're gonna notice in this video that I am really nitpicking, and that's because Bamboo Labs puts out such a good product that in order to find faults with it, you really have to dig into the fine details and pick something. Going back to how easy it is to set up, I think that claim of 15 minutes is definitely possible, especially if you're not recording an unboxing like I was. Totally doable in 15 minutes. Now, again, my only issue was connecting that Wi-Fi and that was a little bit of a hassle. Again, I'm really, really digging for something here. I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10 on how easy it is to set up. The next question I have in my very official and very serious, what makes a good beginner 3D printer? Does it require previous knowledge of 3D printing in order to get this thing to work? Now, this printer does come preloaded with a couple of files for you to test print right out of the gate. However, it is not very clear how to get to those files right away. Now, obviously after messing with this printer for some time, it's very easy to get to these files, but it did take me a little bit of digging, which I know is a little bit embarrassing because it's kind of easy to find. This is just my experience though. I'm not the smartest guy. It took me a minute to find the files option. And that's something that I wish would have been mentioned in the manual. Maybe they could have linked a little QR code that went to a video on how to print the very first print on this thing. Especially if you have some trouble connecting the app, you might be a little bit discouraged when you can't even print the local files that come with the machine. Now, obviously this is a one-time problem. As soon as you know how to get to that files option, you're never gonna struggle again. I just wish it was mentioned somewhere. With that being said, there is also no tutorial on how to use the Bamboo Handy app, which is in my opinion, your best resource when it comes to any Bamboo printers, your best way to find prints, your best way to monitor the progress of your prints. The Bamboo Handy app is amazing, but there's no guide to it. There's no tutorials. It's not linked in the manual besides from how to download it and connect the Wi-Fi, which is nice. Now, I know it's an app and it should be self-explanatory, but some people might struggle with it. It just could have been something nice to throw in there as well. And finally, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty with 3D printing, you are going to need to use the bamboo slicer on your computer. Now, if you keep this in basic mode, it's pretty basic. But if you click on that advanced button, you are in for a world of surprise. There are features that I didn't even know was a thing. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different settings that you can change, which is obviously a really good thing. You can customize your prints entirely. However, it is very overwhelming and there are no guides to it at all, at least from Bamboo Labs themselves. There are plenty of guides on YouTube, which I can recommend, but from Bamboo Labs themselves, they don't have any sort of tutorials for their slicers. So I believe that will require some previous knowledge or at least a lot of research if you wanna become proficient with the slicer, which honestly, I am not there yet. With all that in mind, does it require previous knowledge and experience? A little bit. Now, it's nothing crazy and you could totally learn all this stuff in literally like 30 minutes on YouTube before you get your printer or right after and you have some problems. However, there's a little bit of knowledge. Now, it's probably all common sense, but for this category, I'm gonna be giving it a seven out of 10. Moving on to the next question, how easy is the day-to-day -day operations on this machine? Now by day-to-day -day operations, I mean things that you're gonna be doing every day or almost every day if you're printing like a maniac like me and getting this machine going 24 seven. Now right off the bat, something that is really good about this printer is that the filament changes are quick. Now you'll notice that a lot of my issues with this machine come with that touchscreen right there because guess what? It's not a touchscreen. That's my problem. I know many people are not gonna have an issue with this. And again, I'm really looking for something to make fun of here, but that screen system right there, 
in my opinion, could have been completely avoided. If you check out the A1 series printers that Bamboo Labs puts out, they have beautiful, large touch screens. You can see what your model is that you're gonna print. It's very easy to navigate your way through it. This just seems almost clunky. With filament changes in mines, there is really no tutorial or anything in the manual about how to change the filament. Now again, you just have to do a little bit of exploring through the menus to find it. However, compared to the A1 series printers, it's a lot more challenging the first time you do it. But once you do find it, the filament changes are super quick, super easy. It walks you through exactly what to do, which I really like. It tells you every single step, very easy. Now considering your main interface for that printer is gonna be that screen, which I am personally just not a fan of, that is your day-to-day -day right there. Using that screen is gonna be everything for you. It tells you your print times, how much longer is left on your prints, that's how you control the lights, that's how you do everything. And it's just, it's just not all that. It is just not all that. And that's really all there is to it. It works and it's functional. However, it could be so much better. And because of that, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 on the daily operations. It's really just that screen that's holding this machine back. Next thing we're gonna talk about, how much troubleshooting is required with this printer. Now obviously, the nature of 3D printing, troubleshooting is always gonna be a thing. There are entire Facebook groups just dedicated to diagnosing print issues. We're not gonna be talking about any of that because that just comes with 3D printing. What we are gonna be talking about, however, is that when you get an error on this machine, you need a phone or a computer to view that error and find out how to fix it. Now again, this goes back to that screen, just not a fan. It gives you an error code and that's it. You have to log into your Bamboo Handy app, which will tell you what the problem is and how to fix it, or you have to log into the Bamboo Slicer, and again, it'll do the same thing. However, the fact that you need one of these devices in order to diagnose a problem with the printer is just a little bit lacking in my opinion, compared to the A1 series printers, which don't require that. It tells you what your issue is, tells you how to fix it. It even gives you a QR code to scan if you need some more information on how to fix whatever's going on. This is just a little bit dated, but because that is my only issue and only thing that I've had to troubleshoot, this is gonna get a nine out of 10 in that category. Now let's say you just can't figure out what's wrong. You're getting an error code. Nothing seems to be fixing it. You went on your app, still, can't fix it. How easy is it to find help if there's something seriously wrong with your printer or if you just can't figure out how to solve your problem? Now, I'm sure if this is showing up on your feed, then you know that Bamboo Labs has absolutely saturated YouTube. It is everywhere and that is a really good thing because if you're having a problem with your printer, there's a very good chance that you are not the first person to have that issue. A quick YouTube search could be all you need to find the solution to your problem and that is my first recommendation if you have a problem Look it up on YouTube. And the next line of defense, if YouTube is just not working out, there are tons of Bamboo Lab Facebook groups that people love to help out diagnosing an issue with your printer. Now I know that sounded a little bit sarcastic and some people on there may not be the nicest, but if you're looking for a solution, one of those Facebook groups will have it for you. I can almost guarantee it. And if everything else fails, if there is something seriously wrong with your printer, you need to send it back. You need a replacement part. Bamboo Labs has a customer service team, which I personally don't have any experience with. However, everybody that I've talked to that has had an experience with them, it's been good. I've heard of quick response times. I've heard of parts getting shipped out very quickly, as well as detailed instructions on how to replace the parts. Just look at how they handled the A1 recall. They shipped out new heat beds for everybody that had that printer as well as instructions on how to install it and stay safe. And I think that's just how the Bamboo Labs customer service operates. I think they do a great job at what they do. Obviously, I hope to never have to talk to them, but if I do, I'm pretty confident that they're gonna treat me right. With all those positives, this printer is obviously gonna get a 10 out of 10 on how easy is it to get help for your P1S. Now the final and probably the most important question that I'm gonna ask and answer for you, how good is the printer? None of this other stuff matters if this thing just sucks and can't print anything that you want it to. Luckily, that's not the case. This thing follows the Bamboo Labs blueprint of being just the workhorse of 3D printers. If you are looking to start a print farm, this is the printer that everybody goes with or the X1C, which is just like the bigger brother to this thing right here. They're just reliable. And I know I've said it in a previous video, bamboo printers are like the Honda Civics of 3D printing. They just work. They may not be the fastest. They may not come out with the cleanest prints, but they're reliable. They'll always be there for you and they will always print. 
The print quality on this thing is absolutely amazing. It is up to the Bamboo Lab standard of 3D printing and the quality is always there. Now I do think that I have had a lot more failed prints with this machine than with my A1 Mini. However, most of those were filament issues, which it's gonna be my fault. Even with all of those print fails, I have never had a critical failure or something that will shut down this printer. It's always just been something simple, a little bit of spaghetti going on in there, something easy to fix. I've never had the blob of death that I've heard a lot of people have had with some of the A1 series printers, nothing like that. So far, I've printed in PLA, PETG, ABS, and TPU with this thing. And again, zero issues. Bamboo Labs just knows what they're doing when it comes to switching filaments. You just tell it what you wanna print and it just does it for you. It's like magic. In fact, I printed the entire AMS Lite enclosure, which you can see next to me on this printer. It took a long time because there was a lot of prints on there. Not a single failed print. All the plates came out perfect. I printed those in some Elgu clear PLA. And like I was saying earlier, this machine is not the fastest. However, it is still really quick. It is not gonna beat some of your very fancy custom built 3D printers, but for what it is, it is insanely quick. And honestly, I don't even see a need to print any quicker than what it can do now. The only other complaint, I guess you could call it, that I have is that it is loud. The fans on this printer are very loud. In fact, they were so loud that I had to move this thing into a spare bedroom. Now I've had my A1 Mini out in the living room in the corner tucked away. It can run all day long. You barely even notice it's there. This thing sounds like a 787 trying to take off. Now I know it's a big printer. It's gonna require some bigger fans to cool everything down, especially because it's enclosed. Just something I noticed. And one thing that I wish would be added to this printer is that you could tell it what filament was loaded in it like you can on the A1 series printers. You can go in there, tell it what you have in there. I have white PLA and it saves it and it knows. With the P1S, it's not like that. Every time that you go to print something out, you have to tell it what you have loaded in there every single time. Now again, not a deal breaker whatsoever. Just something that could have been added that was not. For the final category, the P1S is gonna be receiving a nine out of 10 on my very official grading scale. Now I know I have said almost nothing but positive things about the P1S 3D printer, and that's because if you get it, you're gonna love it. However, that price tag is just not something that I can just skip over. When you're looking to get into 3D printing, that's a lot of money to hand over when you don't know if it's gonna be for you, you don't know if you're gonna be able to learn it and like, 3D printing, it's just not something that we can overlook here. Even without the AMS system, this printer is $600, which is already more expensive than the A1 printer with an AMS light system. You're gonna get multicolor printing as well as the same build volume as this printer for a cheaper price. Now I know that you can hook up up to four AMS systems to the P1S and you can print 16 colors. However, that is four AMS systems that you'll have to buy, which are $350 a pop. Here comes a twist. Because of the price of this printer, I unfortunately cannot recommend it to beginners looking to try out 3D printing. I think your best option is gonna be your A1 Mini with AMS system or your A1 full size with AMS system. It's cheaper than this printer without the AMS system. In my opinion, my opinion, mine, this is an intermediate to advanced 3D printer. Now obviously a beginner can get this thing and it'll work for you. It's gonna be great. It is an absolute workhorse. But I think that the A1 series printers just takes the cake with user friendliness and ease of use for those beginners looking to get into 3D printing. After answering all of those questions, the P1S is gonna get a 51 out of 60 on my grading system for beginner usability for 3D printing. Now obviously, this is all my opinion and my scale means absolutely nothing, but I think that's a great score. I just can't get over that price. <clears throat> all right, I hope this video wasn't too controversial. If, if you have any opinions, any comments, any concerns about what I said, if you wanna correct me, do it in the comments down below. I will be happy to read them all, respond to as many of you guys as I can. Obviously, I can't thank you guys enough for checking out this video and if you liked it, you know what to do down below and also check out some of my other videos.